Greetings once again, my friends, and welcome back to Drac Reviews, where today I'm taking on a title that I didn't previously know about until one of you guys brought it to my attention and asked for a possible review for it. And I told them at the time, even though I was very swamped, uh, that I would take a look at it uh, just because I appreciate them. And so today we're going to be diving into Hollow Knight. Starting with the story, and the story as thus, when you begin the game, is you are a wandering Hollow Knight, or at least a wandering warrior, who comes across the village of Dirtmouth, just above the ruins of Hollow Nest. And you notice that the town is quite empty, and that they've been having a problem with the ruins of Hollow Nest, so you take it upon yourself as a wandering adventurer to go down into the caverns of Hollow Nest to be able to help out the community in Dirtmouth, as well as be able to uncover the secrets of the ruins deep beneath Hollow Nest. Now, I should say that there is actually a lot more plot to this, but one of my gripes with this story in particular is that the story is pretty convoluted. Uh, going through the game in my review, I just don't remember a whole lot of story being thrown at me, more guidelines as to how to be a good Hollow Knight, how to be a good adventurer, and so if there was actual legitimate story bits, they were told through the villagers of Dirtmouth, and it was just through hearsay about what could be under the ruins of Hollow Nest, not necessarily what is there. And so the deeper you go, the more you kind of uncover, but it really is kind of convoluted. And I, I got to be honest here, as far as story is concerned, I did take some points off just because it didn't really feel like there was an active story to be told. Does that make a bad game? No, but since story is one of the things that I really value in gaming, uh, it was definitely difficult to get to continue this project when I really wasn't getting much plot or at least as much plot as I would like as I was going through the game. Moving on into visuals. So the game has adopted a cool animation style that actually works really well with the aesthetics that you're working with. Uh, I really didn't have any complaints with the visuals just because, yes, everything looks... Uh, skeletal and insect-like, but considering the surroundings uh, throughout most of the game, it makes sense for them to look that way. In fact, I like the cartoonish look of all the enemies as well as the characters that you would come across, just because it really did feel like uh, each enemy and each character had their own unique identity, and it wasn't necessarily based around the mask that they wore or uh, the the role in town that they fulfilled, but they just felt like unique characters. Uh, I like that elements like fast travel, you have a unique character that is telling you about the good old days of being able to travel throughout all of Hollow Nest. I like the fact that when you come across major abilities, you might even get a tutorial from previous or other adventurers in the area that are trying to help you out. I do actually like the aesthetics of it and the surroundings that you go through. And I got to admit, I really didn't take any points off of this. This actually is a it's a really pretty game. Moving on into gameplay. In case you haven't figured out by the gameplay that's being shown, Hollow Knight is a Metroidvania style game or a roguelike. I've heard a lot of people refer to it as that. So you're wandering around a map. There's tons of sections to that map. You can backtrack as much as you wish. You can be able to acquire items either through currency or throughout exploring the map. All that fun stuff that you've been seeing in Metroidvanias like, say, Shantae or Blaster Master that I covered last year. All that stuff is here. Uh, as far as gameplay is concerned, it does play like a Metroidvania, and I do actually like the feel and aesthetic. However, I do have a gripe with it, and I did take a little bit of points off. I think the difficulty is tuned a little too high. And granted, when I do these playthroughs and when I do these reviews, I'm playing on a normal kind of setting. I'm, I'm running on average for a lot of people just because I know I can cruise through a game pretty quickly that way. It's only rare when I want to experience the story myself, like say in God of War, I go to a lighter difficulty so that I can get the story and be able to enjoy it as I go along. Hollow Knight, however, at the normal difficulty and even at its lesser difficulty, because I tried both, is fairly difficult, and that's a little shocking, considering that Metroidvanias are, in essence, supposed to be at least somewhat easy. I'm not saying that a learning curve isn't necessary in a game like this, and I'm not saying difficulty is a bad thing, but to a brand new uh, perspective fan that's looking to try a new Metroidvania title, this is a little bit discouraging, as far as I'm concerned, and, I could, and after discussing this with actually a couple of you guys, yeah, I saw how a few of you tried out Hollow Knight and got a little discouraged at its difficulty curve and therefore didn't want to go much further into it. I completely understand, especially when, it, much like uh, some of the 
newer entries into indie gaming, as well as Metroidvanias, adopt the Dark Souls method, where you acquire a currency, and when you die, all you have to do is get back to your body. If you can get back to your body, you get everything back. If you don't, you lose everything you acquired. And that adds to the difficulty, and it adds to the frustration, because you want to be able to get back to your body. And in this case, uh, in Hollow Knight's case, they added an extra twist where your body will fight back. Your body will fight against you, uh, becoming all voided, <coughs> and attack you. And if it kills you, you lose it. If something kills you while you're trying to kill it, you lose everything you had. You still have to kill the thing, but you don't have all of the... Uh, Geo is the currency in this one, or you don't have uh, the a the added soul, the MP of this game that you would be able to acquire. You would have to start from scratch again. And that adds to the difficulty. And I'll admit, it's just a little bit of a gripe here. I think it's tuned a little too hard, but I did take points off for it because of that. Moving on into audio. Because of the style of Hollow Knight, you can't really judge it based off of voiceover work. There is voiceover at least to some degree. It's voiceover fully, or, or basically the way I know how to describe it is, look to ukulele or Banjo-Kazooie, where people will say just like, rah, 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 except in this one, they will say one, rah, 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 and, and then at that point, you just read the text that is available to you. So there is voiceover, but there are some roles in here that I feel like would have benef benefited from full-on voiceover. However, not a big complaint. And the music actually is pretty gorgeous in some areas. Really, how, uh, really showcasing a lot of what Hollow Nest provides. Uh, a dark and dismal atmosphere. When you add jungles into it, it gets a little bit of a jungle beat. So, But it also feels dark and dismal. If it's uh, different fungal caves, it has a different feel music-wise. And a lot of the music actually did kind of grow on me after a while. Uh, so at that point, I really didn't take too many points off for audio. I really would have liked some voiceover to it, but not a big problem. The music is gorgeous, however. So with that being said, let's move on into replay value and presentation. Now with replay value, being that it is a Metroidvania title, there's tons of replay value there. Uh, I, I wasn't able to confirm this, but I believe that there is some kind of a new game plus setting. So if you go through the story, you can come back, maybe even have your additional items, maybe have additional geo and just go nuts in the story again. And that's always enjoyable to be able to, to have that happen. I also like the fact with Metro with the Metroidvania style, it's a pick up and play whenever you can, and you can play for 10 minutes and make some progress and then put it back down. Hence why it's actually really good that this thing came out for the Nintendo Switch. You're able to plug and play whenever you want, and it works that way. Uh, so replay value didn't really take any points off there. Presentation, however, does it come together? Yes and no. Um, to my aesthetics, no, it didn't, but that's just because I wanted a little bit more story going on, and I feel like other games this year, like Chasm, were able to pull that off better than Hollow Knight. You had an active story that you were able to follow, you had some lore to be able to sink your teeth into, a lot of stuff in Hollow Knight was fairly vague, however, the gameplay, the audio, and the visual aesthetics do kind of make up for it, so in a weird way, yeah, I would say that the presentation's kind of there, uh, I just think it would have helped a lot more to be able to have something resembling an actual plot and story that you're following. And given what I was able to play of this game before getting frustrated with it, uh, it just isn't there. Which is why I have no problem giving Hollow Knight a 7 out of 10. I feel it's a solid C effort. The story aesthetics really kind of bothers me and the difficulty curve is a little high. The biggest problem that I have and why it, it kind of gets a C rating is with, indep with independent gaming, you have to be able to bring in even the lowest common denominator to be able to help support your brand. You're trying to make as much as money as possible so that you can continue to make games. And with difficulty curves like that, yeah, you're going to develop a fan base, but you're also going to be pushing the door out or pushing a lot of people out in the meantime that aren't necessarily cool with those aesthetics and can get them in other more successful Metroidvanias. So with that being said, I do think it has a lot of potential. However, it kind of squanders it in the favor of difficulty over trying to get more people into the new brand. So at that point, yeah, 7 out of 10. But is it worth it? Currently, you are able to get Hollow Knight on PlayStation 4 in a Void Heart edition, as well as Xbox One in the same edition, PC, as well as Nintendo Switch. And currently, the prices that I'm looking at are setting it at $19.99. So is it worth it at that price? 
If you're looking to experiment, probably not. I would wait until it's on sale for at least $14.99. If you're a dedicated Metroidvania fan, that actually would be worth the price as far as I'm concerned. Just keep in mind of the learning curve you're going to have to deal with and the difficulty. But overall, is it worth it for the average person? Probably not. I would, I would again tell you guys to wait until it's either at $14.99 or at $9.99. And I do know that Steam has done quite a number of sales on it so far. So at that point, I'd probably go with a PC version as opposed to Nintendo Switch or to any of the consoles. It seems more likely you'll be able to get a sale on the PC version. But if you can't, still $20 is not that bad. It's actually a fairly decent price for a budget title like this. And with that being said, that's going to go ahead and do it for my review. Thank you guys so much for listening in and watching. And thank you guys so much for your continued love, support, and patience with the podcast, with the channel. I really do appreciate it. And I'll be back in time for the next review.